She's loyal opposition. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, and uh, it's an honour to follow my esteemed colleague uh, from uh, Edmonton, who has really been leading the charge along with several colleagues, uh, trying to shine a light on what the Liberals are trying to hide. And one thing we know by now, Madam Speaker, is it must be really, really bad. Because the Prime Minister has gone to such great lengths to keep the truth from, cover, from coming out. Now, you don't go to such great lengths if it's just some kind of a, a minor technicality or if it's a, a, a small point of difference between two political parties. When you send in your members of parliament to embarrass themselves at committee, uh, carrying on a filibuster, uh, insulting the intelligence of Canadians and other parliamentarians, and really denigrating the institution of parliament, which is meant, we are all here, for one fundamental purpose, and that is to hold the government to account. And when we do that, and the government throws up all kinds of contrived barriers to that in in investigation, it tells us something. And that is that the Prime Minister must be hiding something really, really big. We need to know who knew what and when about allegations of the communist regime in Beijing interfering in Canadian elections. Madam Speaker, Canada is a wonderful country with a proud heritage and history, and Canadians are well served by strong institutions, strong democratic institutions that over the course of years we've refined and improved. And while it's run by individuals, it can never, uh, by human beings, it will never be perfect, but Canadians can have great confidence in those institutions if the politicians who hold those public offices treat those positions with respect, Madam Speaker. Because there's nothing magical in the air or in the waters or in the trees of our wonderful country that will keep those institutions strong if politicians who undermine them get away with it. That's why every generation of Canadians, both voters and both elected officials, have to have to treat those positions with respect and hold those accountable when they do not. And, Madam Speaker, this is not just, you know, uh, we don't come to this House today to debate this motion based on, on rumours. We don't come here to debate this motion based on uh, what we overheard in, 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 uh, in, in committee proceedings. We are basing this motion on the fact that high-level national security officials have taken the unprecedented step of blowing the whistle on this government. For someone who works at CSIS, the Canadian Security and Intelligence Service, to go to journalists with sensitive information puts them and their families and their careers in grave jeopardy. There are serious consequences in law, and well there should be, for people who divulge sensitive information. But as we learned over the weekend from the official who, who took the extraordinary measure of explaining his actions in the Globe and Mail, this individual was so compelled to blow the whistle because of the inaction of this government. Because for multiple years, our intelligence security officials, who often put themselves in, in real imminent danger when they conduct their, uh, the, when they carry out their duties, have been warning the Prime Minister. We've got multiple reports. I'm, re I'm reading here from the Global News story of March 8th, highlighting a special report prepared by the Privy Council Office for the, Trudeau, for, for the Prime Minister's government, and it was date stamped January 2022, well after the 2021 election and well after the 2019 election. The memo was also finalized, suggesting it was intended to be read by the Prime Minister and his senior aides. Global News also learned of an earlier high-level warning about clandestine funding of China's, quote, preferred candidates that came from a bipartisan panel of parliamentarians two months before the 2019 election. The information came from Canada's National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, which reviews national security matters and promotes government-wide accountability. Now, who does that report, who does that committee report to? Who reads those reports? They report to one person, Madam Speaker. That committee reports to one person, the Prime Minister. It is inconceivable that the Prime Minister did not receive that report. And yet, on multiple occasions, the Prime Minister has stood in this place and claimed that he had no knowledge 
about funding coming from the communist regime in Beijing flowing to candidates here in Canada, despite at least two reports that highlighted exactly that, that went to him personally. That's why we need this motion. That's why we need to uncover, we need to break the logjam that the Liberals have imposed upon members of Parliament at committee. Filibustering, delaying, pulling out every trick in the book, you know, reading the phone book into the record, just to prevent important key officials from testifying. Now, some people might say, you know, like, what, 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 what would be the cause of this? Well, we know. We know that the Prime Minister admires the communist dictatorship in China. He didn't just, he was asked once, other than Canada, which country he admires most. Now, he didn't say he admired China because of its natural beauty. He didn't uh, talk about uh, the history of China. He talked about admiring the basic dictatorship of China. Those are his words, Madam Speaker. Those were his words. Upon coming to office, look at the policies of the Prime Minister. The Chinese government has invested heavily in something called the Asian Infrastructure Bank. This is a development bank that pays for large-scale infrastructure projects all throughout Asia. Many security experts and foreign affairs experts call this Asian Infrastructure Bank the development arm of the foreign affairs policy of the Communist Party of Beijing. And yet the Prime Minister decided to take $250 million of Canadian taxpayers' money and give it to the Asian Infrastructure Bank to help promote the national interests of the Communist Party in Beijing. We know the Prime Minister took years to make a decision on Huawei when all our major trading partners, all our security partners were banning Huawei from the next generation of telecommunications. This Prime Minister dra dragged his feet. They haven't kicked out a single diplomat. We've heard about illegal police stations operating as, on behalf of the government in Beijing. Reports of intimidation and harassment of people from China, coercing them and, and pressuring them to vote the right way or, or to support a certain nomination candidate. These are serious reports that don't come from other political parties, Madam Speaker. They come from our nat national security experts. The Prime Minister has known about this for months. They haven't closed down a single one, and they haven't expelled a single official from the communist regime. Madam Speaker, what did the Prime Minister do last week to try to, in, in the face of mounting pressure and backlash and, and more and more Canadians asking tough questions about what the Prime Minister knew, why he has done nothing about it? They appointed a special rapporteur. Special rapporteur. I can just imagine, Madam Speaker, the, the, the marketing department of the, of the Liberal Party. You know, maybe they whiteboarded interlocutor, but they thought, no, no, that's a, nobody will go for that. Maybe they thought about calling that person Inspector General. But no, they landed on Rapporteur. And who did they pick for the Rapporteur? A close family friend of the Prime Minister himself. The Prime Minister, who has proven to be allergic to preventing conflicts of interest, has appointed a family friend, someone who brags about growing up together as, as families in, in the, in the uh, ski chalets in the, in the Laurentian Hills. Could there be anything more emblematic of the Laurentian elite here in Canada than the Prime Minister appointing a family friend from his background in the Laurentian Mountains at his ski chalet to investigate whether or not there should be a public inquiry in his handling of the foreign interference. It's unbelievable. Not only just a close family friend, Madam Speaker, but someone who sits on the Trudeau Foundation board, the very foundation that accepted money from, that flowed from the communist regime in Beijing and has only paid it back seven years later. Wow. But Madam Speaker, today is about something else. This motion will shine a light. It will ensure that the Ethics Committee, uh, Committee can shine a light on what the Prime Minister knew. So this is a very, very important decision for the New Democrats, Madam Speaker. The NDP used to believe in things. When I think back, I come from Saskatchewan. Many people consider Saskatchewan to be the birthplace of the NDP. And when you look back at the history of leaders of the NDP, whether it was Jack Layton, who I served with, or Ed Broadbent, or before that, we may have disagreed on principles, we may, but we at least recognized that the NDP had principles. We would disagree over policy, but we could respect that they believed in something. And one of the things that the NDP used to believe in was openness and transparency. And yet, for some reason, for some reason over the past few weeks, they've decided to put their own partisan 
interests ahead of the national interests. So I challenge the NDP today, Madam Speaker, if they are serious, if they want to look Canadians in the eye and say that they believe in ethics and openness and transparency, then they must vote for this motion. And if they don't, they will be signaling that they are okay with liberal corruption, Madam Speaker. Hey.